reason to talk about this. It's ridiculous. I, I just, uh, it just felt like a need, this class. It just felt like something was needed. And so I thought I would do it, really. As simple as that. And um, it comes under an umbrella. I've got, I have a, a website called Authentic Living. Uh, and, um, and all the kind of stuff I try to do, so I see some people as one-to-one -one clients. I don't like the word spiritual, I have to say, because uh, if we actually remove our layers, it's naturalness. You know, we're naturally sacred, as it were. Uh, and just our daily lives, I come from a kind of uh, uh, sort of karma yoga sort of idea of things, which is kind of just doing your job, loving your family, uh, being with the people that you're with, that's that's what we've got, so that's what we're working with, you know? And there's no need to kind of go off and do too much else other than that. Um, but uh, in my own life, I've kind of um, always been aware of there being kind of more to things, I suppose. From a child, from being a child, I was just aware of stuff. And, uh, and of course, society sort of wants you to be somebody else. Um, and we're given lots of things. We're given a name, then we're told what a good person is, and then we're told this, and we're told that, and we're told all sorts of stuff. Uh, not necessarily by people who know anything much at all. And so um, we end up living, or trying to live, but this is my experience anyway, uh, through those things, and it just, and it just feels like the way to cruise. And somewhere along the line, for me anyway, I can't speak for anybody else, but it seems that the, the energy of loveliness and life seems to get lost in this kind of almost like battle to, to to be good or to do stuff or to fit in into the world in some way. Um, and I, and I realised just. In my observations, because I'm a writer, I've published a number of books. Uh, just and, 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 and I always say my writing is about bearing witness. Just through my work, I just started just noticing that, that most people don't meet each other, you know, o or only in um, highly dramatic moments or when they're really drunk or stoned or stuff. So we do that. Uh, thinking that that's kind of some sort of space or authenticity or something like that, or we have to wait till somebody dies and it creates a space, or we have a divorce and it creates a space in our lives, uh, and then there's a, an opportunity for some vulnerability and truth. And it just seems like madness to live like this, just utter madness. You, you sit in a restaurant, you watch two people who've been married for how many years, and maybe they've never made love in their entire lives, maybe they've banged their bodies off each other, but they've never met. You know, what they're seeing is their projections, they're seeing through their one person's mask, they're seeing another person's masks, and, and we're trying to look each other through that stuff, and yet, underneath it all, there's our original stuff. So, um, for myself, in my own practice a few years back, I just decided to drop the masks, um, thinking I would die, and uh, I, I've become some kind of ego monster or something like that. And, um, and yet, as I, I wondered, I used to call it, I used to say, I'm going to find the source of love no matter what. I don't care if I die. That's what I used to say to myself. And uh, I'm very stupid uh, in some ways, so things have to be put in a really obvious way. So I, I get tattoos. Uh, so this tattoo uh, is a symbol of flowering from within. <laughs> This is a D.H. Lawrence poem that I really love, which says, uh, All I want of you, men and women, is that you should achieve your own beauty as the flowers do. Uh, and, and I came across this poem in my twenties, and that stuck with me all the way along as a kind of a guiding principle, that we could flower from within. Um, and so I set this up, really. Little retreats, meditation, uh, some one-to-one -one sessions, um, and uh, basically, it's not mindfulness, and it's not mindfulness of breathing, and it's not meta um, What it really is, if it's anything, is using, it's coming into, initially coming into contact with the natural 
thing that is their life, I guess we could call it, but the naturalness that is us underneath things. And learning to live again in that place, beginning to marinate in that. Um, and from that, then we can actually start moving out into the world. And that's what I mean by authentic living. It's not about battling against anything, ripping our egos off, uh, or changing anything. You know, you don't have to go vegetarian or give up smoking or anything like that. As we move into the truth of ourselves, I just believe stuff will just, that's not useful, will start falling away. You know, it's really quite interesting. I don't know if you've noticed, you, you may have noticed yourself. When you start meditating, how quickly it is you start taking things to the charity shop, you know? Because when we're, when we're trying to live an outward life, we acquire stuff. Stuff is what we live through, either through our masks or through things. I need a car, I need a lover, I need this, I need that. Uh, you know, or I need trinkets, I need vinyl records, I need, you know, a large television set. Whereas as we come inside, Jesus calls it the kingdom of heaven within, you know? Uh, we don't need so much anymore and and so we can start letting things go and the stuff maybe we've been fighting with for so long will kind of uh, ease up a bit so that's the that's the idea you know and uh, it's not meant to be scary I said to say to Russell because uh, he arrived first uh, that what I'm really not doing is I'm not selling you anything I'm not trying to sell you on a religion I'm not trying to sell you on a way of thinking not trying to add anything to your thoughts, not trying to be right, you know, um, or light or anything really. Just turning up and uh, and doing something for, for, for the sake of it, really. That's it. So um, I want to read you a poem. Uh, I begin each session of a poem by somebody, not mine. Uh, you can read mine in the bookshops, but uh, this one is by uh, an astonishing American poet who I uh, was really blessed to meet a couple of times. He died last year, unfortunately. And um, this is called St. Francis and the South, which I don't know if you've heard this before, but um, it's just absolutely beautiful. The bud stands for all things, even for those things that don't flower. For everything flowers from within, of self-blessing. Though sometimes it is necessary to reteach a thing its loveliness, to put a hand on its brow of the flower and retell it in words and in touch it is lovely until it flowers again from within, of self-blessing. As Saint Francis put his hand on the creased forehead of the sow and told her in words and in touch, blessings of earth on the sow, and the sow began remembering all down her thick length, from the earthen snout all the way through the fodder and slops to the spiritual curl of the tail, from the hard spininess spiked out from the spine, down through the great broken heart to the sheer blue milk and dreaminess, spurting and shuddering from the fourteen teeth into the fourteen mouths, sucking and blowing beneath them the long perfect loveliness of sound. So, just like in the Lawrence poem, you know, flowering. So until we, until it flowers, you know, retell it in words and in touch is lovely. Until it flowers again from within a self blessing. And uh, and that's it in a nutshell, really. That's that's kind of uh, what I'd like us to consider. That um, the flowering of our lives, really, and uh, and the eternity of that, you know. So.